it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Hi, welcome to Branch Together. I'm Jenna, and today we're finishing the book of Revelation with chapter 22. And before we begin, as always, let's pray. God, we love you. And we want to be faithful to you, and we want to follow you. Help us today to know how to do that. Give us hope for every day that we walk with you here on this earth and give us hope for your future return and your future reign in a, in a new world and a new earth and a new body. Thank you that this isn't all there is, that this life isn't it. I thank you for that hope. And I pray that you'd guide us as we read today. In Jesus' name, amen. Then he showed me the river of the water of life clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the city's main street. The tree of life was on each side of the river, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for healing the nations, and there will, be, there will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. People will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun because the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. I, John, and the one who heard and saw these things. When I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had shown them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I'm a fellow servant with you, your brothers, the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Then he said to me, Don't seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Let the unrighteous go on in unrighteousness, and let the filthy still be filthy. Let the righteous go on in righteousness, and let the holy still be holy. Look, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to repay each person according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to attest these things to you for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. Both the spirit and the bride say, come. Let anyone who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life freely. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share of the tree of life and the holy city, which are written about in this book. He who testifies about these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with everyone. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. I want to reread verses 1 through 5, because it's just so beautiful. Then he showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the city's main street. The tree of life was on each side of the river, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for healing the nations, and there will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. People will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, because the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. This 
This water of life nourishes everyone down the middle of the city and gives water to the trees growing around it, producing fruit every month. That's a lot of fruit. That's not normal. And they produce leaves that heal the nations of their wounds. And they will, there will no longer be any curse. When, when I think of the water of life or living water, uh, I think of Jesus, his description of himself in the Gospel of John, but I also am reminded of what the prophet Jeremiah spoke. In chapter 2, he says, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Life is found in no one else but Jesus. Nothing else can hold water. And the servants who worship him will see his face. In the book of Matthew, Jesus teaches that the pure in heart will see God. What a gift. Now, at the end of this chapter, it feels like really disjointed, confusing, and repetitive. It could be that John's sort of recapping and repeating himself for the sake of our, the reader and their memory and kind of recapping things. Or it could be that John didn't finish putting it in order that he wanted, and so we're kind of getting it as is. So there's some debate on that. that You could check it out if you want. But regardless, John longed for the speedy return of Christ. Right? He longs for his return, and Jesus will keep his promises. John was sure of the grace of the Lord and sure of that grace's sufficiency for us. And the book ends by saying, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with everyone. And I say amen to that. Go into your day today, drinking from the well that won't run dry, the living water, and live in his grace. So that's all for me and that's all for Revelation. Thanks so much for journeying with us as we went through the book of Revelation.